Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're going to be doing my uh, best summer transfers of the year 2024. So the transfer window has just ended a few hours ago. And today, I'm going to actually break down who I think has been the best transfers through the respective clubs. Now, keep in mind, guys, it's just my opinion. This is just what I believe. So feel free to make your uh, ones in the comments below. And like I said, guys, everyone has their own opinion. So don't get mad at me if I didn't put this player. It's just my personal preference and everything like that. And I try to do this as objectively as I possibly could. Also, another thing is that um, I decided to make it to only one player for each team. So, for example, only one transfer for each team that has been signed. So that way it gives all the teams a chance. Because some of the teams only signed one or two players or some teams like signed seven or eight. You know, so at that way I could diversify this list and not just make this list just a few clubs. You know, I want to make this list as interesting as I possibly can get. So that's why I did that way. So I, I follow the rules in mind. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, guys. And of course, remember, guys, like and subscribe, of course. So let's start with number 10. Coming to number 10, I asked Califori to Arsenal. Now, the reason why I put this at number 10, um, I still have to put this in the top 10 because, you know, I still think he's a quality, he's a good center back. You know, he's a good left back as well. And he can also uh, make forward runs as well. And remember, he's a guy that got the assist for that goal that Italy scored against Croatia, that last minute equalized the second game. So I just think for Calafori, the reason why I put this one up so low in the top 10 is because I don't really think Arsenal need him. I, I really don't think Arsenal need him. I think they're fine without him. But I think he's a good squad player to have. You know, he's a good player to have in the left back position, you know, good center back as well. You know, I could have, I could have also put Mikko Moreno in this top 10, but I think he's more insignificant than Mikko Moreno. And, um, and so, yeah, like I said, that's why I put him at number 10. Number nine, I put is Douglas Luiz. Douglas Luiz, man. He's a quality player. It was probably one of Juventus, uh, sorry, one of Aston Villa's best players last season. And the key reason why Aston Villa managed to get Champions League football. Now, I've also, I could have also put Coop Miners as well. I think Coop Miners is a fantastic player that, you know, came from Adelanta. I could have also put Capra and Thuram as well. And, you know, because Juve's midfield looks really strong now. And I think that's been one of the weaknesses. And we kind of talked about this in my Juve downhole video that one of the reasons why Juve has been so mediocre in the last couple of years is because of how bad the midfield is. You know, you had the likes of Rabiot, who's been so trash. Uh, he's just, well, maybe trash is a bit harsh, but he's he was underwhelming, you know. And now Juve have really upgraded that midfield. And I think that midfield is now much more stable, much more goal scores in it. And I think that's what's going to make him good. So I think he could be a, he's going to be a great sign for Juve. And I think Juve this season is going to be a very interesting team to look out for because under Thiago Matza, they're looking very much different to what to they were under Allegri. Number eight is Danny Olmo. Now, this is interesting, guys, because Norm, at the time, um, I said um, I said a few weeks ago that I wasn't a, a happy with Danny Olmo at the club. I still am not that happy. But I started to realize that Danny Olmo may not be as bad as I believe he can be. And I think what's key with Danny Olmo is that he's got that uh, goal scoring sense in him. You know, he's a player that can be versatile. He can play as a cam. He can play as a left winger. And that's the great thing about him is that Danny Olmo is a good player. My only, only concern with Danny Olmo is his injuries. He's just an injury prone player. That's a big issue I have with Danny Olmo because otherwise, if he wasn't injury prone, I would probably put him higher in this list. And, you know, that's kind of the big reason why I couldn't put him higher in this list, you know, um, so that for that reason. So I think he could be a great player, great asset player, great squad player. I, I could see him coming off the bench a lot of times and, you know, making that difference for us. You know, he could be that super sub for us, potentially. He may even be a starter if he turns out that great from the super sub position. But, yeah, I think Danny Olmo, for me, deserves to be in the top 10. Uh, number seven is Alvaro Morata. I think it's a great transfer, especially considering that um, Milan let Giroud go on a free and Giroud obviously had to go. And I know a lot of people will say in the comments below that Morata isn't clinical, and that is true. Morata isn't clinical, but I still believe that Morata is a good striker. He's not a bad, he's not as bad as people make him out to be. He's still a decent striker. Now, is he like top, top world class? You know, is he like on the level of Arlene Holland? Of course he isn't. He isn't. You know, and considering Milan only paid 13 million for him, it's a decent it's a decent price it's a decent price you know and i think i think he's a player that could suit Serie A, and i think milan could definitely get the most at, he can get the most out of milan so I'm, I'm very interested to see how this works i think it's a very low price it's a good bargain as well and i think morata will do well at milan in my opinion number six i have is okay kind of the fact that city got him on a free just after coming back from barca is just crazy it's really bad business from barca but 
putting that to a side, it's a it's a great it's a great transfer because Gundogan is such a good he's a good he's such a good player that he can offer you goal scoring. He can also offer you uh, leadership qualities as well. And I think Gundogan is such a crucial player. And remember, Gundogan was key to getting that trouble because remember he scored the FA Cup final, he scored the Champions League final. He could have a huge role for Man City this season and be that difference maker for them to score in those decisive games, you know. And after all, he is a clutch player after all. So I, I could see a situation where Gundogan could score the decisive goals in those big games, like, you know, the goals and the Champions League, you know, the goals against maybe Arsenal, maybe, you know, Manchester United, potentially Liverpool. And yeah, I think Gundogan is a great player. And it's great that City got him in a free again, you know. So good, good. Good on City. I could have also put Savio as well if I wanted to, but I'm mean, come on. Yeah, I, I you got to put Gundogan. You got to show respect. Gundogan has been one of the most integral players in the last few years. Number five is Delit. Delit for me is quality center back. Now this might come as an unpopular opinion. I don't know how people are gonna. I don't know how people are gonna react to this. I believe Delit is one of the best center backs in the world. I believe he's probably like top ten. I would say he is up there. And what makes him so good is his age. He's also his tackling. He's reading of the game. And that's what I like about Delit is that he can offer you aerial duels. He can score those headers. He's great at tackling. He's great at reading. He's great at interception. And I feel like for me, people are not going to say this. Delit was Byron's, one of Byron's best defenders last season. People think it's um, Eric Dyer, but Eric Dyer came in the second half of the season. Delit was their best center back for the first half of the season, and even still a large part of the second half. And I look at that game that Delit had. I believe it was against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. He was fantastic in that game it was amazing that game the defensive dude and du duels he put in that game fantastic and everything and i just think for me for delit is that he's a player that's like misunderstood i think you know and i think the thing is people just keep thinking that oh he's just a bad player because he keeps moving he switched clubs too often but it's just that he's just a player that just he's just a player that is misunderstood and you know and i think delit is a really good center back i think he's a quality center back i think he you know, him and Lasona Martinez can form a really good partnership at the back. And I think he is a really good player. So I think Delit is a quality player. I could have also put Oguatse. I could have also put Lenny Yoro. I could have also put Xerxes. But I think Delit's been their best. I think Delit's been the best. I could have also put Miles Rory as well. But I think Delit has been their best signing because he is so vital to center back, especially letting Veron go. And he could be that center back partnership now in the back, you know, replacing Maguire. So we could see Lasona Martinez and Delit, which should be the center back partnership. You know, you should be going for. Moving on to number four is uh, Juan Neves, guys. Juan Neves is so brilliant, so talented. This guy is such a great player, man. I think he is going to be one of PSG's best players this season. And the guy has been so far amazing for PSG. I believe he's got like four assists in his like first two games. It's like, it's incredible what he's done. At this young of age, at 19 years old, and he's such a good, uh, he's such a good DM that he can also make those ball playing passes. And he's such a well-rounded midfield. Guys, I think Joao Neves is, is someone that is so is so huge for PSG. So I think it's a great signing, really, really good signing. And I think this is a fantastic sign for PSG. So credit to PSG for making the signing. Number three is I have Julian Alvarez. Now, I know Julian Alvarez has had kind of a tough start in La Liga so far. At the time of recording this video, it's got zero goals. But guys, we have to keep in mind, and we have to wait until the end of the season. You're right. And I think Julian Alvarez is a player that will fit Suminu's style. He's a player that's so uh, agile. So uh, technical, he's also got that goal scoring ability as well. He's also clinical as well. And I think Julian Alvarez can offer, uh, offer, um, be that guy that Atletico Madrid need. He can be that difference maker, you know. Um, and I just think that for me, for Julian Alvarez, he just needs that first goal. Once he gets that first goal, then I think he will be a great striker because it's difficult to get whenever you're at a different team, that getting that first goal is the hardest part because you're not used to su surroundings, you're not used to the environment. And once you get that first goal, you'll understand how it's like, and then you'll continue to be prolific. And I just think that Alvarez just got first goal. I remember South American strikers have a good trend uh, track record here at Atleti. Suarez, Aguero, um, then you got uh, Forlan as well, I believe. Like, you know, Diego, Co well, actually, you know, Diego Costa is not South American, but you get the point. Like, three South American strikers have succeeded, and I think Alvarez is next in line for that. So I think Alvarez will succeed. Number two is Alise, guys. Alise is fantastic because I think one of the issues that Byron had last season was how bad they were in the goal scoring department because Sane was just not great. Gnabry was inconsistent. And Coleman, he is a good player, but he's just not that clinical guy. Alise has been really good. We saw what he did with Crystal Palace. He's been fantastic for them. You know, what he did at the Olympics as well. 
guys, Olise is a really good player. I think Olise could be one of the best players in Europe at the end of the season. He's just that good of a player. His goal scoring, his dribbling, his link up play, guys, Olise is a really good target. And remember, guys, Chelsea and I believe Manchester United were rumor, uh, rumored to get him. And I, it was more likely he would go to a Premier League club. The fact that he chose Bayern Munich over those two clubs is testament to himself. So that's actually a good. It's a, it's a huge statement, man. Huge statement. At number one, it's killing Mbappe. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to go in the comments below and storm and say, Orban, how could you pick Mbappe when he's got zero goals on La Liga and da di da da Guys, I understand. It's been three games. Mbappe's yet to score a goal. But guys, Mbappe has time, you know. And I think the key thing for Mbappe himself is that he has to understand that this is La Liga. La Liga is not the same as Liga. La Liga is more difficult than Liga. So I think Mbappe has to realize that if he can pro if he can figure out his positioning and figure out how to be effective for this team, then he can be an asset to this team. And I think the key for Mbappe to succeed in Real Madrid is him adapting. Because if Real Madrid adapt to Mbappe, this will fail massively. Especially. Now, even though I'm putting this number one, this could also be a huge failure as well. Like, I'll put, put it this way. If it's a huge success, then the me putting number one is justifiable. But if it's a huge failure, then me putting number one is, is terrible. So, right now, it is an amazing transfer. But at the end of the season, it could be a terrible transfer. So... At the time of this recording this video, I still believe Mbappe will do well in La Liga. I still believe he will be uh, one of the best players. And I believe Mbappe is a player that is a talented player. He's a talented player. We know what he's done. You know, he's a World Cup winner after all. And I think Mbappe, he has to understand that. I think he has to figure out how he's going to figure out Real Madrid. And we'll, let's see if Ancelotti can figure it out. Because, like I said, guys, if Mbappe succeeds at Real Madrid, he, he then it then it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And you got to keep in mind, guys, Real Madrid got Mbappe on a three from PSG. This is the only signing in this top 10 and my list that's for a free. No other team got a player on a free of this quality. So for me, even if he doesn't succeed, getting Mbappe on a free is ridiculous. Getting Mbappe on a free is ridiculous. It's 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 insane. So looking at the honorable mentions we got here, we got Chiesa. I was thinking about putting Chiesa in the top 10. Lukaku. I was also maybe considering Dobrik, Coop Miners, Palinia, Endrick, Masroy, and Amadou. Anna. I'm sure there's others I can go, like, you know, Minta as well, I believe. You know, there's probably some other honorable mentions, but these were the notable ones, guys, I have. So let me know your top 10 in the comments below and some honorable mentions you guys have. And like I said, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. So please remember to like and subscribe, of course. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.